VR headsets. Everyone seems to care so much about the displays, but seems to overlook the lenses. You could have the best screens in the world and then they would be ruined if you used a water bottle as a lens. Even if you know basic stuff like, ooh, pancakes look good, do you know why? Do you know what makes Fresnels different from pancakes and what makes both of those different from a sphericals? If I had to guess, probably not. So let's fix that. Before we get into specifics, here's a quick disclaimer. Lenses are not all identical. Two headsets can share the same type of lens, but they will have differences in how the picture is viewed through them. Setting that aside, all lenses are built off of certain principles that won't change no matter the headset. To begin, let's talk about the most common lens in a VR headset. The Fresnel lens, not Fresnel. They've been found in low-end, mid, and high-end headsets of the past and present. Some of these include the Valve Index, the Rift CV1, the HTC Vive, the Quest 2, and many, many more. Chances are, if you're into VR, you've used a headset with a Fresnel lens in it. Their most defining characteristic is their rings. But what even are they? To understand that, we need to understand what a Fresnel lens even is in the first place. This is an everyday lens. It's pretty thick and depending on the material, probably pretty heavy. Not exactly ideal for a VR headset. So what if we cut it up into segments and compressed it, ensuring that each segment keeps the same curvature as the corresponding position on the original lens? Now let's do it again. You could keep going on and on and on and on, and in the end you'd be left with the same thing. A lens keeping the same curvature as the original, just with a much flatter profile. This is a Fresnel lens. While it does keep the same curvature, it also has these peaks. Those peaks are what the rings on a Fresnel lens are. They're also the cause of one of the main drawbacks of a Fresnel lens, the glare, also known as God rays. If you take a close look at these god rays, you can see that they follow the rings of the lens. You see, while this Fresnel lens is bending some light in the same way the original would, it's also letting a lot of light escape at these peaks. That's what we see as glare. In my personal experience, Fresnel lenses aren't that bad. Some people make it out like they killed their firstborn child, but if you aren't actively switching between a headset with Fresnels and one with something else, you won't really be bothered. And even then, I frequently switch between my Index and my Quest Pro, and I can tolerate the Fresnels. Don't let Fresnel lenses alone scare you away from a headset. Pancake lenses have been popping up more and more recently and are looking like they're going to be the new standard going forward. The first two headsets with them to gain any sort of traction were the Pico 4 and the Quest Pro, but now we're seeing them in things like the Quest 3, the Big Screen Beyond, and even the Apple Vision Pro. They're best known for their better edge-to-edge -edge clarity over other offerings. This is due to the fact they work a lot different than other lenses do. Let's say this is our pancake lens. Notice how there's quite a bit more going on than with our previous Fresnel lens. Pancake lenses are sometimes referred to as pancake stack optics, because really, it's not just a singular entity. Here we have a few different layers. Let's send some light through and see what happens. As you can see, sometimes light is allowed to pass through, and other times it's reflected back. The light might hit a layer it was allowed to pass through before, but be reflected upon reaching it again and then a layer that once reflected it might let it pass through. This is done by polarizing the light. It's a fairly complex concept that even I don't understand. Thankfully, the specifics aren't necessary here. Just know this is what allows the lens to fold the light. This has a few byproducts. The first one's a benefit that I mentioned before, the better edge-to-edge -edge clarity. You don't get the same distortions from Fresnel rings because you don't have them. You still won't have a perfectly clear image at the edges, but your eye is in the center of the lens anyways. 
The second is that they can sit much closer to the display. Contrary to popular belief, pancake lenses are not lighter or thinner than Fresnel lenses. They just sit closer to the screen. See, the light travels the same distance as it would with a Fresnel lens, just in a much different way. And now you have less empty space in between the lens and screen, meaning you can make the headset thinner. Since the headset's thinner, the weight's now closer to your head, and that means it feels lighter, even if it isn't. Of course, there are some negatives. The main one being polarization loses a ton of light. I've seen numbers floating around that the Quest Pro's lenses let anywhere between 8 and 15% of all light through them. This means you need brighter displays to counteract that, which means they're going to be making more heat, and more importantly on a standalone headset using up more battery. Pancake lenses look absolutely gorgeous. I have a Quest Pro and a Reverb G2, and the Pro looks better despite the Reverb having the higher resolution. The Reverb looks clearer in the center, but the center isn't the entire screen. Pancake lenses just give you so much more freedom to look around, and I'm happy to see them popping up on lower end headsets like the Quest 3. A spherical lenses are the weirdest ones here. They've been used in really high-end headsets like anything from Vario, or if you want to call it high-end, the Pimax Crystal, and really low-end headsets like the PSVR1 or Samsung Gear VR. Their most defining characteristics, if you can call them that, is that they're thicker and heavier than other options. I'd explain how they work, but really I already have. A Fresnel lens usually is just a compressed version of one of these. Granted, they look much better than Fresnel's since you don't have the whole ring thing going on. You can also have much brighter displays since you aren't losing a ton of light to polarization. You will still have some distortions around the edges, but that's normal with any lens. The perfect lens doesn't exist. Everything has a drawback, so you best be considering other aspects of headsets. You could have the best lenses in the world, and then if you rip a display out of a calculator, the picture would still look like garbage. I could make that analogy with anything, really. It doesn't matter. Lenses are important, but they don't overshadow every other feature of every headset. Look at me still recording on a four-year-old headset when I have a Quest Pro. The mic on the Quest Pro just sounds so bad that I can't bring myself to record on it. Even if something newer and better comes out, just be happy with what you have and you'll be golden.